we're live. We're not live on Instagram yet. We're trying a new setup. Don't look at my arm. It's creepy of you to do that. And um, I don't I don't think it's right that you should look at my arm like you were doing right now. And I said stop. So welcome. I'm Sarah the Rebel from Women's Wrestling Talk. And this is Ricky Mandel. Um, he's also known as Ricky Mundo. He's also known as um, something with a skull. Trey say. I was like, Trey Skulls? That ain't <laughs> Trey Skulls is not his name. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. That's gonna be your new gimmick. Uh Trey Skulls in the Hizzy. Um, so we're gonna give people a little bit of a chance to join us. Um, but in the meantime, in between time, uh, what is women's wrestling talk? If you're new here, I don't know how you found us, but my ring light got me looking. At oh, sorry. Um, we are a group of women, TK Trinidad, Emily uh, May Heller, and me, Sarah the Rebel, and we interview women in the wrestling world. So women bookers, women wrestlers, uh, women promoters, all sorts of stuff like that. You can check out a few of our um, interviews right now. I'm trying to remember who our most recent ones are. Serena Deeb, um, Tasha Steeles, um, Shaw Guerrero, Heather Monroe, we have a Willow Nightingale, we have a lot of really, really good um, interviews up, so you can go check those out on either our YouTube or on anchor.com, um, we, oh, excuse me, anchor TV, anchor.tv, I don't know, anchor.fm, I remembered it, I remembered it, okay, anchor.fm slash women's wrestling talk, um, and if you go to any of our social media, you can find the link to it, so um, Ricky, I'd like you to introduce yourself a little bit and, and tell people who you are, oh hey Juan Hernandez, um oh well thank you for getting a photo of me that's awesome okay ricky who are you tell people i am ricky mandel aka ricky mundo aka tresse or Treskull, as we just established <laughs> um from the <laughs> underground seasons one through four uh did a little work with championship wrestling from hollywood former uh hollywood heritage champion the champ you the champ, champ right now i am champ tell them all your champs versus pro wrestling and out in oregon um WCWC. Awesome. Look at this champion just sitting next to me uh, wearing a really good shirt, coincidentally. So if you're new here, what we do is we talk about the news. Oh, you look so handsome. This <laughs> ring light is really not, I would not say he's not handsome, but like the ring light. It helps. It helps. It improves. Um, so we talk about the news in the show and we love your comments and opinions and thoughts on the news. So please uh, tell us back. I'm going to wave to a few people. What it do, what it do. Um, so this new setting for my camera, I might have to, hmm, oh, I might be blocking my own screen there. What if I did this? Hey, what's up, Wow Voodoo? Uh, shout out. We have, uh, oh, wait, then let's cut that. Okay, listen, we're going to figure this out because I can't see you guys' comments with the way that I have the phone right now. Um, what if I move it here? Hmm. Yeah, eh, that's good enough, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm fine with that. All right, cool. On to the news. Um, so first we're going to talk about the WWE. Uh, yeah, just build, get closer, get closer. Um, Becky Lynch had her baby all by herself. There was no one else involved. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was very exciting. Um, do you think the baby is going to be a wrestler? You would think yes, but I'm kind of hoping he or she becomes an accountant. <gasps> Wow. Hello, Wheels 5 Stud. Welcome, welcome. Um, oh, P.S., if you feel like chatting with us or anything like that, we can see your comments and we'll respond to you. Don't worry. Trish Stratus dropped a trailer for her new movie, Christmas in the Rockies. Uh, I'm going to tell you the um, synopsis of the movie. After her father is hurt in a timber accident, Katie Jolly must enter a lumberjack competition to save her family's business. But when the paramedic who saved her dad's life also joins the contest, a romance sparks just in time for Christmas. That was a lot to absorb. So I watched the trailer because I was like, what? <laughs> what, what does a lumberjack competition even mean? Um, and then I accidentally thought that the main character was Trish Stratus. And I was like, wow, she was really not herself in brown hair. And um yeah i'm not gonna be rude to that actress but i was just like oh my that that blonde hair has been carrying trish stratus all these years uh i was i was wrong she's not the main character <laughs> she's the person who trains you for the lumberjack competition which you in which you face your nemesis <laughs> who saved your dad's life 
Uh, Iridian Fiero believes they are going to have a ring in their backyard. That doesn't mean he won't grow up to be an accountant. Doesn't mean that. I agree. It does sound like it's going to be really bad. Who's going to go see it anyway because it's Trish Stratus? Raise your hand. And you're coming too. No, I won't. <laughs> um, Alexa Bliss and Charlotte Flair will be in the Punky Brewster reboot. That's pretty cool. Uh, as somebody who used to sing Punky Brewster, we're always having fun together. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that's actually the theme song, but that's what I used to sing as a child uh, when I would watch the cartoon. So anyway, in case you missed it, there was this like live action thing. And apparently uh, Alexa Bliss and Charlotte Flair are gonna be in it because Devon Dudley is producing. It's all very strange, um, but I'm excited nonetheless. And I hope that means, like I know this isn't gonna happen, but there is a part of me that hopes this means like she goes to a wrestling show and they're wrestling. Cause that would be freaking awesome. Um, but it's probably gonna be something like they're walking through the mall. Uh, speaking of Charlotte, she is supposedly returning soon. Um, don't know like how soon. She's kind of said she wasn't gonna be gone for all of 2020. So possibly appearing just before the, you know, even if it's not to wrestle a match, um, appearing before the end of the year. But um, if, supposedly, I don't know if this is true, guys. This is from the dirt sheets. Uh, but supposedly, uh, they are going to um, have a better storyline for her because she supposedly was very upset with the storyline where they had her go to NXT, completely derail Rhea Ripley's shit and then do nothing with her and then things were all weird. Supposedly NXT and Raw were like fighting over her and so she was like, listen, I'm not coming back until you get your shit together. That's what I heard. I don't know if it's true. Thoughts on that? Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, babe. <laughs> Um, so sadly, they were saying she was going to return with Andrade, like a team up with them. But then I heard that's not actually that's gonna what happen. I heard. Yeah. Um, so in NXT, I don't talk about a lot of WWE stuff. It just so happens there was a ton of WWE stuff this week. So I am bringing up a few things. One of the people I like in WWE is Ember Moon. Was excited to see her come back. And then I've been kind of not excited about how she uh, she has been losing. You heard the Royal Rumble wheels. Okay, Royal Rumble. Um, I haven't been super excited about Ember Moon losing. And now I'm super conflicted because Raquel seems to be getting a push, which I'm excited about because she's big and she's been doing stuff that looks pretty good. But Ember Moon lost to her. Thoughts? You watched the match. What did you think? I thought it was great. Um, but, yeah, it's it's like a catch-22 where you're happy to see one person getting the push, but at the same time, this person was supposed to come back with all this fire behind her and does nothing but go under. Right. So it's, you know, it's funny. So I'm friends with um, – what's her name in WoW? Okay, Steffi. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't remember her WoW name. <laughs> I'm friends with uh, someone in WoW who loses a lot. And she's actually talked about that, how frustrating it is to have to put on this face of like, I'm definitely going to win this time, guys. You're going to see I'm going to come in. And then what do you say every week as you keep losing? It's kind of kind of hard. But uh, what were some highlights of the match for you? Oh, um, Raquel darting her right into the, the post. And then her landing on the apron for the smooth transition into a pin. It's pretty. She wasn't just you know having to scrounge her up and put her back in. It was just right there one too. I mean, she kicked out, but <laughs> I mean, she kicked. Out. Um, she. It's been really cool watching her growth from the first May Young Classic, I believe. I can't remember if it was. First, I think it was the first one. Um, all the way till now, she's just like really excited to watch, and I. I'm so happy she's not wearing the um, jean chaps anymore because I really didn't like them. All right, on to AEW. There were six women's matches on AEW Dark this week. That is a lot. Nyla Rose returned. Uh, it looks like things are really picking up for the women's division. Um, a lot of people have been complaining, of course, about, um, you know, the lack of storyline and everything like that. And the fact that most of the women's matches are still happening on Dark instead of the main AEW. But I want to look on the bright side. There's tons of matches happening. And we are finally starting to get some storyline. Because Brandy and Shaquille O'Neal were in an interview together. Did you watch the interview? No. Okay. <laughs> At the end of the interview, Brandy like throws water at Shaq and then like goes off on him. Huh. Um, <laughs> you a big asshole, <laughs> something like that. Anyway, it was pretty funny. <laughs> um, but you know, it's over her issue with Jade. So now, 
cut to another thing. Jade, Nyla, and Vicky beat up Red Velvet. Now, this is slightly weird to me because I'm like, who am I supposed to be rooting for? <laughs> because I don't naturally feel, I don't know, Brandy doesn't encourage me to naturally root for her. And Nyla kind of does no matter what she does. So I'm like, but also Brandy just threw water in somebody's face. So that's not really like a face move. So I'm like, is this heels versus heel? I don't know. Either way, Red Velvet was getting stomped out, right? So Serena Deeb and Big Swole, who I know I need to root for because they make it very easy and clear to see I should root for them, came in, saved Red Velvet, but dun dun dun, Ivelisse and Diamante jumped in, started going with them, and it set up a tag match for next week. OMG, AEW, you did it. You had a storyline <laughs> lead to a match. <laughs> Keep it up. Um, I was also happy to see my girl Abaddon uh, get a win, defeated uh, Tasha Price. And then Sheeta came out, hit her in the head with a, a kendo stick. <laughs> it's very, I was like, oh, I hope you're wearing a wig. That was a lot. Right in the, right in the <laughs> noggin. Have you taken a kendo stick to the head? I have. Uh, how does it suck? Let's put it this way. I used to be smart. Oh, wow. <laughs> that kendo stick. No, not even once, kids. <laughs> not even once. <laughs> Oh, it's sad, but it's funny. Um, so on Impact, Deanna Prazo will put her title on the line against Rosemary this Saturday at Final Resolution. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I watch Impact mostly like in clips or uh, catch up with it some other time. So I don't quite get how their pay-per-views work, but apparently this is a special event, which is different than a normal event. And I, I don't even know what that means. But I was super happy to see that the Sea Stars are returning and they're going to actually have a match there against Havoc and Nevaeh. Um, so they were brought in for the tag tournament and it would have been very easy for impact to just like not bring them on again and say they're just for the tournament. So the fact they're back makes me really excited and happy. Um, and then also on that night is going to be two ex team members from the tournament. Um, uh, Tennille and, uh, Alicia, Alicia, I never remember how to say her name right. Uh, they were tag team partners, but now they're on the opposite sides in a mixed tag match. Um, so that should be interesting as well. Uh, the setup for that did not make any sense to me, but I'm just happy to be here, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, sure, great. I love mixed tag matches. They're kind of my favorite. I wish we would get to have some bookers. Anyway, uh, as for what's next in the tag team tournament situation, uh, the semifinals are going to be Jordan Grace and Jazz versus Havoc and Nevaeh, which is probably going to be amazing, and I don't even know mentally how I'm going to prepare for that. And then um, Tasha and Kiera are going to be taking on Rosemary and Taya, uh, also in the semifinals. So I do not know which teams are going to advance. I feel like it could be any of them. What are your thoughts? No, I agree. You 100% agree? agree. I would hope, this is just my opinion, you know, on this, um, that get back after all these years, that she would get a bigger push, kind of like the whole Ember Moon thing we were talking about. I'm mm -hmm. not using it correctly. I would hope that Jazz would go to the finals, and plus, Jazz is awesome, so I kind of want to see her. Awesome. That's true. <laughs> you know, I I always kind of dismiss it when it's like an older wrestler coming back because so often they're used just as enhancement. Um, uh, sorry, Will said so just reading. Haven't watched AEW in a few months. The Shaquille O'Neal thing is weird to me. I think it is weird. I I do agree. Um, oh, guys, please let me know if you think uh, for this tag tournament, who do you think is going to the finals and who do you think is going to win it all? So I tend to think that the, the old people come back, they're always going to lose. But how amazing would it be to finally, like, give Jazz her due, right. you know, in a way and, right. and have her win? That would be pretty cool, even if they take it off her kind of quickly because she's supposedly retired. You're right. Now I want that. I don't normally let myself hope. I'm normally the pessimist in the group. I'm like, everything's going to be terrible. But I'm going to hope. Um, and then... If Tasha and Kiera got to the finals, that would also be a really big deal to me because Kiera has been an impact for a while now, just like pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, but they're building Rosemary really strong right now. So I'm not sure if they're going to have, unless they like have it be some mix up, which is the beauty of a tag tournament. And that's right. what they did with Deanna and, and Kimberly. They were like, oh, some wacky shenanigan mix up. And that's how you lost. And that's how we kept you strong, even though you guys lost. So like maybe that'll happen, but. I just can't really see them losing right now with the momentum that they have. Uh, so there wasn't a ton of news this week. Um, so we're going to just start asking Ricky questions and put him in the hot seat. Oh, no. The seat is actually cold. Fun yeah. fact. Um, what was your favorite moment of working with Lucha Underground? It doesn't have to be a match. It could be anything. The wedding. Yeah. Season four. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
It got to the point where I had the creepy doll, Rosa. I was obsessed with John. Fuck Rosa. <laughs> I was obsessed with John. Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, he's marrying all of a sudden. I mean, but he's marrying Taya and I'm jealous and they're, they're messing with me and kicking me around. So I decide through Rosa to unlock Matanza mm -hmm. who helps destroy the wedding. And that was, like I said, going to storylines, right. just a major storyline leading to me and Taya. Right. My favorite part of that wedding was um, <laughs> when what's his name? Uh, Antonio Cueto. Uh, Dario Cueto. Oh, sorry. Antonio Cueto. <laughs> pretend not Dario Cueto. Um, goes, that's right. Tacos. <laughs> the fine wedding gift. Listen, there's nothing wrong. And honestly, who wouldn't be excited for tacos, right? The crowd cheers. It's just the fact that he said it with like no facial expression. Tacos. <laughs> Go back and watch on Tubi. Yeah, you can watch it. P.S. You guys can watch it Underground on Tubi right now. Um, it's all of the episodes are on there. Easy to watch. I know when I was trying to watch on Netflix before they like were behind a season or two each time. It was like mm -hmm. annoying. Tubi's got all of it. You can watch this guy. Um, how many people know that you didn't just like wrestle as Ricky Mundo on there? Um, did like a lot of people know that you played both Ricky Mandel and also... Um, Trey songs. Trey songs. <laughs> um, two variations. One, I would be doing the Tresse gimmick, and I would hear people yelling from the crowd, "We know it's you, Ricky!" Oh, you know, I hate you, wrestling fans. Right. Um, and then there would be people who would just show up at autograph signings or just random indie shows with a picture of Tresse. Hey, can you sign this? Oh, I actually had somebody send me stuff to my home address, which is really weird. Oh no, I um, hope it wasn't the German guy, Tobias. It was the oh. German guy. How did he find you? <laughs> don't ever find me, you German fuck. Not, nothing wrong with Germany. I was born in Germany, but don't. Yeah, I'm German too. Uh, are you? Yeah. Oh, okay, but screw you, Tobias. Do not send people to people's, things to people's homes. Um, wait, <laughs> did, do you have a different signature for Tresse? Did you think about that ahead I of did. time? I did, I oh, did. Okay. It's just my sloppy handwriting, not in cursive. The first time I had to sign something as um, Sarah the Rebel instead of Razor, I had a moment. I was like, probably should have thought about this before now. <laughs> um, things you don't think about when until the moment you're there. Sign a big giant S or an R, whatever your first name <laughs> is. Do you remember the S from school? <laughs> yeah. I could just do, <laughs> just do that. Um, so... You've been watching Cobra Kai. Yes. Uh, tell folks a little bit about Cobra Kai and why you like it, why you think they should watch it. Um, just something that hooked me. You know, good. like I said, going back to good story. I just need something with a good story. Cliffhangers. Cliffhangers are a big thing for me, and Cobra Kai has a lot of them. Um, if you've ever seen the original Karate Kid, uh, it's just like going back from – a continued story from when these guys are younger into adulthood and seeing how much they've changed or grown or lack of growing for uh, some of them. Some of them. Uh, so what have you been watching anything else? Has anything else hooked you as much? As Bojack that? Horseman. Mm, okay. What do you like about Bojack Horseman? It's a stupid cartoon about a talking horse. Good. It's awesome. Talking horses are funny. We talked about this. It's, it's... Mr. Ed, hilarious. Have you ever mm. watched like an episode of Mr. Ed? Yeah. Love Mr. Chat, Ed. I would love to know if any of you have ever watched an episode of Mr. Ed. I'm very curious. I've never sat through, I've never sat through a full. I've been like, oh, look, Mr. Ed's on. And then like two minutes later, I'm like, yeah, he's off. Um, Catchy tune, too. Okay. Uh, speaking of things you can watch, back to this. Um, funny enough, we were watching Batman Forever. And um, Edward Nigma, some of his mannerisms really reminded me of Ricky Mundo. Uh, where did you draw inspiration for that character's obsessiveness or weirdness or, or any of that? Oh, okay. So I knew going in, I was going to be, they wanted me to do uh, obsession plus like murder, all this stuff. So some of it came from uh, Pennywise Clown, because you know my obsession with Pennywise Clown, the uh, original Pennywise Clown. Um, so what I would do with that was I would, because I was terrorized by Pennywise for years and the stories there, but um, yeah. So I went back and I watched the original a few times, just wondering like, why was I creeped out by this? What mm -hmm. creeped me out? 
And then I would realize like, okay, it's, it's the hand gestures, it's the facial expression. So that's kind of where I drew for the facial expressions and just different little things like that. Um, and then there was one more that I thought about. Was it Psycho, Norman Bates at the very end. When he's Ooh. talking to himself in his head and he's just like, Oh, that's yeah. very creepy. Yeah. I didn't like it. So. Have you guys watched a series called A Teacher on Hulu? I have not. Have you heard mm -hmm. of it? No, haven't seen it. Is it got martial arts in it? Let us know. We await with bated breath. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Was there any other news that you all saw that you wanted to talk about? Say it in the chat and we'll get to it before the end. But just wanted to remind you guys, uh, we are Women's Wrestling Talk. Every week we post an interview with a woman in the wrestling world, whether she's a wrestler or a booker. Uh, we had the booker for Mission Pro, which is Thunder Rosa's um, company. Come on. Um, Thunder Rosa has come on. Serena D, the NWA Women's Champion, has been on our show. Tasha Steeles, who's in the Impact Tag Tournament. Um, we have a, oh, we have an ex WWE superstar who's coming up, I believe next week on our show. So we have a lot going on. Be sure to follow women's wrestling talk on YouTube, on Twitch, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, on your mama. Wait, not on your mama, um, on your mama, maybe not the mama, uh, not the mama everywhere else, but not the mama. Um, and just let us know what you think. If you got, even if it's negative, if you guys are like, your mic suck or something, let us know. Cause that helps us improve the show and get even better. Um, Ricky, where can people find you and check you out? Instagram and Twitter, Ricky underscore Mandel. And on Facebook, Ricky Mandel. No underscore. No underscore. I'm going to underscore that. We have some new people joining. So real quick, I'm just going to run it back from the top. Uh, we were talking about women's wrestling news, Becky Lynch having her baby, Trish Stratus dropping her Christmas movie. Alexa Bliss and Charlotte Flair will be in Punky Brewster's reboot. Um, Charlotte is going to return soon. We talked about the sadness we feel for Ember Moon, but the happiness we feel for Raquel. Um, AEW looks like they're finally getting some women's wrestling storylines going on. You know, they had a lot of backstage um, feuding leading up to a match. Uh, they had the Shaq interview where Shaq got nice and wet. Um, we had Sheeta coming in and hitting somebody ahead with Kendo sticks. So lots going on in Impact finally. And, and it can only get better, I think, is more, um, you know, as the vaccine comes through and travel bans will eventually lift and they'll be able to bring in the women they clearly meant to bring in originally. Um, that's going to be really exciting to watch. Uh, and then for Impact, they have a show this Saturday. Deanna Prazo uh, versus Rosemary. Sea Stars versus Havoc and Nevaeh. Um, do they have a name in Impact? If anyone knows, let me know. Because on uh, Wow, they're Monsters of Mayhem, which is excellent. And they should have a cool nickname. They're Havoc and Nevaeh is so much to say every time. Um, and yeah, I talked about the semifinals and all that stuff. So if you have any other news you want to talk about, don't no, spot a high school teacher having an affair with a student. Wheels has nothing to do with it. any of the movies or shows like BoJack Horseman. It doesn't sound like Cobra Kai. You try to stay in, in the genre of things you like to watch. I'm just teasing you, but thank you for the recommendation. Uh, well, I'll never watch it. Hmm? Nothing. Oh, yeah, you better, better yeah, have nothing just, to say. Just, <laughs> I only like shows with vampires, dragons, spaceships. Vampires, dragons, spaceships. Karate. I think that's it. I think that's yeah, all that's I like. True. Oh, swords, yeah. if I didn't say swords. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. He's tried to get me to watch so much stuff, right. and I just sit through it miserably. Yeah. And then bring talk it up. Talk about planes, trains, and automobiles. What's it's a horrible. Think of that? Nobody hmm. talk about it. It's a horrible, horrible movie. No, it's okay. Classic. So on that note, thank you guys for hanging out with us. We'll, uh, we're usually back every Thursday. I think we, uh, we, we are back next Thursday, but then the Thursday after that is Christmas Eve, so we will not be on. We are supposedly having an amazing guest next Thursday. I don't want to say it because I don't want to jinx it in case it doesn't happen. But uh, he's somebody whose name you all know, so hopefully that happens. Anyway, all right, thanks for hanging out with us, guys, and we will see you next week. Bye.